In this short video, I'm going to work an example of finding the parameters of the sinusoid from the graph of the sinusoid. We have a sinusoid, x of t equals a cosine of 2 pi f t plus phi, and I'm interested in finding the amplitude a, the frequency f, and the phase phi given the graph of the sinusoid, which I've shown down here. Now I've used the data cursor in MATLAB to highlight the positive peaks, and so x refers to the time at which the peak occurs, that's the x-axis, and this y value tells me the height of that peak. So we have a height of 3, and that occurs at negative 0.007 seconds, 0.001 second, 0.009 seconds, and 0.017 seconds. Those are the four maxima that are shown in this section of the sinusoid. So as we've identified, the peak value is 3, and that corresponds to the amplitude of the sinusoid. So we know that A is going to be equal to 3. Next, the second thing we're going to do is look to find the frequency of the sinusoid. And to find the frequency, we need to identify the length of each cycle, or the length of one period of the sinusoid, and that would be the time it takes to go from one peak to the next peak. We can see from the data cursors that that distance is 0 0.008 seconds, or 8 milliseconds, so capital T, the fundamental period, is 8 milliseconds. The frequency is 1 over the period, and so that's going to be 1 over 0.008 or 125 hertz. So F then is 125. Now that we've found the frequency, we can also find the phase. And the way we're going to do this is by identifying how much this cosine has been shifted relative to a cosine with zero phase. So if the phase were zero, then this positive peak would be located at the origin or at t equals zero. So we see that instead this positive peak is located at a time t naught equals one millisecond or 0 0.001 second. Therefore, I can write the sinusoid in terms of its amplitude three times cosine of two pi 125, the frequency, and then t minus 0 0.001. So this minus 0 0.001 is the time shift of one millisecond to the right that's evident in this sinusoid. Once we've written it this way in terms of a time shift, we can just multiply the 2 pi 125, distribute that over both terms, and we end up writing the sinusoid as 3 cosine 2 pi 125t minus 0 0.025 pi. So the phase shift is negative pi over 4, or 0 0.025 pi. So there's our three parameters that we've identified from the graph. We get the peak amplitude, or the amplitude from the peak value of the sinusoid. We find the period, or the length of one cycle, and that gives us the frequency. Once we know the frequency, we can use the time by which the cosine is shifted from zero, in this case, it's 0 0.001 seconds to the right. We can use that time shift and the frequency to find the phase. I want to consider what would happen if we used a different peak to find the time shift. Suppose we take the peak that occurs in the sinusoid at negative 0 0.007 seconds instead of using the peak that was closest to the origin. So I can write my sinusoid x of t as 3, same amplitude, cosine of 2 pi 125, same frequency, times the quantity t plus 0 0.007. So in this case, I'm regarding the sinusoid as having been a cosine whose peak was at 0, and then I'm taking that peak and I'm shifting it to the left, by 0 0.007 seconds, hence plus 0 0.007. If I distribute the 2 pi times 125 over both of these terms, I see that the phase becomes 1.75 pi, which is a different answer than we found using the other peak. And it turns out this is a correct answer. 
However, the phase is not unique. We can always add 2 pi or subtract 2 pi from a phase value and it's going to be give us the same answer. So this answer works and it is correct for the sinusoid, but it is not a unique answer in the sense that it's not within the range minus pi to pi. So we're going to take the principal value of this phase. In order to do that, we need to take 1.75 pi and get it to lie within this range minus pi to pi. That is accomplished by subtracting 2 pi from 1.75 pi. Obviously, adding 2 pi is going to put it further outside this range. So we'll, if we subtract 2 pi, it ends up in this range, and then we get a value which is negative 0.25 pi which is the same as we had when we chose the peak closest to t equals 0, the peak at t equals 0 0.001 second. So it turns out that you can choose any peak in the sinusoid for the time shift that you like. You may not get a phase within the interval minus pi to pi unless you choose the peak which is closest to t equals 0. But you can take the principal value of that phase and that will give you the unique answer in this interval.